Good evening. Happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome, Thursday. welcome. It's our first non Nancy Thursday. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad, but I'm also excited because this game looks fun. I'm excited to play it. Yes, it does. It'll be good to branch out. <laughs> yeah. Also, updates since you last saw us is Lauren and I got our magnifying glass tattoos. Mine is right here on my arm. Lauren's is like right here on her wrist. So yeah. We're Nancy. Yay. We're Drew Crew forever now. Um, I'm excited. Yep, It's fun. Love it. Reminded <laughs> of it every single day now. Yes. <laughs> Avery's here. Hey Avery. Thank you, it's Avery. It's fun. Did you, oh, um, sh did you end up buying this game and starting it? I'm excited to play it. Um, so yeah, this is a, a, a Hercule Poirot mystery. Um, it's based off an actual Agatha Christie book, I believe, but it is one that I have not read. Super cool. Yes. Um... I have read, I think, four of her books, um, four other ones, but not this one. So it's all new. I'm already into the art style of it. I know. Love um, it. I played it for a couple hours earlier. Game's a little volume spicy. Okay. Yeah, it is. We'll bump this. <laughs> At work. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't? Um... It's okay, I played two games of Scrabble with my boss today on the clock, so that was See, fun. you know. <laughs> Sometimes it's even It was raining. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess when we get into the game and people start talking and there's like background noises and stuff, let me know if I need to adjust these other two. Maybe I'll bump them down just a little bit, just preemptively. Is that a better music volume? It is for me in my ears. Okay. It helps with cognitive function. That's right. Okay, right. Yes. yes. You're right. Okay. I think that's all the adjustments we need to do. Uh, so I made us a little profile here. We have ego points. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Poirot is a very uh, notoriously like egotistical detective mm. in the in the same way that like Sherlock is, but Poirot I think is mm. more uh, more relatable and more human typically than Sherlock is. Sherlock. So maybe like if we do something right, our ego gets mm. boosted. I'm assuming <laughs> that's what that means. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got a little bonsai tree. Ugh. Okay, I'm excited. Let's get started. Have you seen the 50 trophies to unlock? They're in the box. Raja. No. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Raja says welcome. That was immediate. Gosh. <laughs> she knows. It's like a six. She knows. Oh my Some god, so Poirot. cute. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor thick head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look Never. out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra, A, B, C. Hmm. Oh, it's some sort of joke. Who Maybe. would write and but say please that? Uh, you me probably to inform won't Chief it Inspector out. Jap. Alrighty. In we go. Oh, that was so cute. Ooh. Hello. Who are you? <laughs> okay. Very I cinematic. I don't know. Collect ego points by acting in the same way as Hercule Poirot. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know how intensive this game is. Like, if we need to be taking notes, I have no idea. 
I have a notebook ready. Same. <laughs> yeah. It's here, Poirot. The murder took place in this street. Grim place indeed. To the fair, Hastings. The streets of Andover are in a terrible state. Look, there's Chief Inspector Jap. He's talking with a policeman. Let us try not to get our shoes wet. Okay. Reconstructions. You'll be able to rewatch a reconstruction of each crime. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Click on a zone in the scenery to go there. When the cursor changes, keep holding the click and move the cursor to the desired action. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh my yeah. gosh, this is cute. This is super cute. Oh, okay, bye. Over here, it's Hastings and Poro. You missed the nine o'clock train? We took the half past ten. Luckily, the service is good to Andover. So, Chief Inspector, what do we have? The victim is called Alice Asher. She owned this tobacco shop. She was killed yesterday with a blow to the back of the head. At what time? Let me just check. Oh, okay, so information collected is stored in our notebook. Got it. Take advantage of the moments when the person you are with is busy in order to observe him or her. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is very Eleanor. Okay, you will obtain clues about their state of mind and personality. Left click and hold on Jap and then hold and move to the left to select observe. Left click and hold and then move. Okay. Oh, I see. Find three clues that agree with Poro's remark. Move the mouse to guide your gaze. Is Jack being too relaxed? Oh. Let us find the clues that prove it. Relax. Um. Um. He's not actually looking in his jacket right now. <laughs> oh, okay. So. Something with his eyes. I know that I would have guessed that. Indeed, Poro. We were used to seeing you judge people with more discretion. Uh, what are we. What? Um. Something with his hat. Okay. Alright. So we got. We got three. Jap is in okay. a good mood. I bet he thinks he's already called the culprit. Oh. I bet those are going to get harder and harder. The last customer to see Mrs. Yeah. Asher alive left her shop at half past five. The body was found at around 11 in the evening by an officer doing his rounds. The shop door was open. That's what alerted him. Had anything been taken? A little tobacco, maybe, but you'd hardly murder for a few smokes. There's nothing of any real value in the shop. What type of woman was Mrs. Asher? In her 50s. Married, but separated. No children. A husband? Aha, uh -huh. Franz Asher, the husband. A Franz. Alcoholic and violent. It's said that he regularly insulted his wife and threatened to kill her. Lovely. He sounds so much like Moss. Mm, I do hear that, for sure. Just like in a toned down way. <laughs> Ooh, there's a clue thing here. We won't, not that we're going to want to use that, but just, it's there. I was wondering if we could get to our notebook from this screen, but it doesn't seem like it, uh, yeah. We probably have to be out of talking to someone. Yeah. What is this percentage that's counting up? How long between getting clues, maybe? Maybe. Mm, I don't know. Like, maybe ask his opinion? Yeah, we're gonna be nice, right? Yeah. Do you think he's guilty? We'll look for Franz Asher. If he doesn't have an alibi, the case is closed. A very unoriginal murder. Um, that's not how it but works. <laughs> May I examine the crime scene? Of course, old chap. Hello, rat. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. Why'd you yell that at us? We're right next to you. <laughs> uh, click on the arrow in the bottom right-hand corner to display the menu icons. There we go. 
Okay, inspect the crime scene. Alice Asher owns a tobacco shop, married to France. She lived alone. Wait, what? They're separated. Oh, right, right. Okay, she was killed in her tobacco shop by a bullet to the back of the head. 50 years old in Andover. Okay. Little gray cells. Is theft the motive for the crime? What is this? No. Nothing was taken. That we, we know of. On it? That's weird. That's true. You're right. Um, okay. Have you seen the timeline in the bonuses? Okay. Oh, God. There she I is. I don't know why I was thinking she wouldn't still be there, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Okay. Uh, why is there, like, a bloody bag here? Observe the object from all angles, holding the cook in the middle. Red liquid is oozing out. Is it blood? Is it? No, no. It's, strawberries. it's just some strawberries that are losing their juice. Strawberries. They probably come <laughs> from the fruit and vegetable shop opposite. <laughs> it's not just any railway guide. It's an ABC. Oh? Name drop. What does that mean? Is it just like the publishers, I guess? It's open at the letter A. Oh. There are no prints on the book. How do you know? He dusted them. I don't know. Okay, so those well, have little circles on them now. There's one more thing here, I guess. Oh, the all the handprints. The is covered with fingerprints all on top of one another. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to use them. Okay. Okay. Okay, objects hide secrets behind complex mechanisms. It is up to you to decipher them in order to find what they are hiding. Observe the like a puzzle? Uh, it sounds like a puzzle! Observe the object from all angles by holding the click and moving the mouse. Zoom in by clicking on part of the object with the left button of the mouse. Zoom out by using the right button or, okay. Some elements move by holding the left click and moving. The teal okay. does not appear to have been touched. I have to check that nothing is missing from it. Something is preventing the drawer from opening. Mm. Okay, I don't think we have much to go on here. Can you just put in anything? Like... It would be best to examine the rest of the till. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't look at mm. the bottom of it. Oh, hello. Five. Ah, a mechanism has just made a fan click. The teal is full of money, but there is something strange. Ah, okay, so it's something 5-2. Oh. Because the 5 had dashes on either side of it. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, is there... Something is hidden underneath. Can I... Can I pull that? Can I... Can't move the money. I will admit this took me entirely too long. Uh-oh. Something is hidden underneath. Okay. 
Can so, we, like... I'm just trying to look underneath it. Oh, it's on the right. It's eight. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's eight. Eight, five, two? But... So we probably have to press them on the machine. I guess so. Can I click these while it's open? Ba -ba -ba. A key. This must be the key to the back of the shop. Alrighty. To use an object in the inventory, slide it on to an element in the scenery or a person. The objects that you stock in your inventory can also be examined more closely. To do this, click on an object. Okay. Let's look at the key. That's not the inventory. It's just here. Okay. Large rusty key found in Alice Asher's till. Seems like it's a key. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Confirmed, it is a key. <laughs> it is a key. It could have had an engraving or something on it. I don't know. Um, new question available. How do we explain the presence of an ABC guide on the counter? Okay. I know. Yes, let's look at her. Hello. Super sorry she just has you got one murdered. wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of a struggle. She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? Mm, maybe. Why would you mm, have played The it? body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. I also noticed that the, um, the, like, front side of the building said that it was, uh, like a newspaper, not a tobacco shop. This poor woman's head is resting oh. in a very even-shaped pool of blood. Even-shaped? Interesting. I can't see any other mark on the floor. Okay. Okay. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. <laughs> yes. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. Devin made hmm. a, an appearance. Okay. There are cigarettes packets. Okay. He hardly ever does. <clears throat> Can we... I guess I can't really turn around or anything, so I think I just... we have to... Yeah. There are cigarettes packets. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So can we... The door is locked. Okay. Do you want to let me see the key? There we go. Okay. Interesting. Ooh. So she lives right behind her shop. There's blood on her pillow. Blood. Zedor. You know, often Zach will cut him one of his moles on his face, shaving, and there will be blood on her pillows. Mm, that's true. She is a woman. So she I... is a woman. <laughs> Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? Perhaps nosebleeds. That's a good explanation. An inscription in German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. To my Alice forever, Franz Asher. The Ashers were a lovely couple when they were young. Aww. That's sad. Okay. It's nice, it's nice that you know when you're done. Yes, I like that there is like tick, things to like tick off and there's a certain number specifically what is this thing it looks like a puzzle a puzzle thinking such a pretty decoration should be at the center of the motif to respect the symmetry <laughs> he's 
so funny. <laughs> Have you seen any of the newer uh, Poirot movies? No, I haven't. I think you'd like them. They're both, yeah? Yeah, um, Death on the Nile and uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, I saw Murder on the Orient Express. I did, yes. But I haven't seen Death on the Nile. Um, it got a lot of hate, and I thought it was perfectly fine. I mean, it wasn't like the best movie I've ever seen, but like I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for like an entertaining mystery movie, and it satisfied me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt that way about the Orient Express too, which is, yeah. I liked it a good bit. I yeah, I liked it as well. I think I might have liked Death on the Nile more than Orient Express actually. Really? Okay, yeah. I um I wasn't super thrilled by the ending of Orient Express. Mm -hmm. So I I yeah. I definitely will give the other one a watch. Yeah, I think that might have been why I enjoyed um uh death on the nile slightly more is because i didn't know the outcome of it ah uh, yeah because i had read orient express but i had not read uh, death on the nile i see yeah um, perhaps this one I mean that sort of works, but you can't turn you can't turn the outer ring or the inner ring. Mm -hmm. It has to be either this or the other one. I mean, is it as simple as like just doing? I hear the fence sound as if something oh. wasn't locked. I'm with you. I thought they like all had to be lined up and pretty. I yeah, I thought it had to make yeah. like, a whole maze. <laughs> Making it harder than it needs to be. This Welcome is... to Thursday night. <laughs> uh, it is blocked. Blocked. But we did the puzzle. Maybe it's somewhere else. Oh. <gasps> what? Okay, so there's a bird up there. There's oh, there's different birds. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna turn them all until they all make that noise. Okay. There's probably. Uh. <laughs> like a way to do it. Do we just need to press each other? There may be an order. There probably is. Is this still... I can't even click on it anymore. Okay. Um, I'd hmm. say, yeah, make sure we look at everything on the box first. So there's... Also birds on the top. Were these birds up here? These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They won't move. Oh, okay. So we gotta match them. Got it. So that one's upside down. That one's upside down. This one is to is facing west. We'll yeah. say. This one is facing north. And that one's facing south. It looks like no. East. I think. So, south, north, west, east. Oh. No, what? No. I'm not trying to quit it. I feel like it was like that. 
this one. There we go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Pretty, we got ego Very points. Pretty. Yay! <clears throat> Whatever that means. <laughs> Medicine. Hello. Laudanum. Laudanum based cough medicine, Mrs. Hasher, and Dover Morley Laboratory, London. It's strange to find such an elaborate medicine from a leading London laboratory in the home of such a modest woman. I suppose. Because medicine is so expensive, because healthcare is whacked up. Is that what he's getting at? Did they have the NHS at this point? In from Mr. Adam Flint, Maybe. Royal Bank, Eastfield Road, Andover, to Mrs. Alice Asher, 5 Bishops Road, Andover. Dear Mrs. Asher, further to your request of 12 February 1935, I know, it's great. <laughs> I have informed my superiors of your wish to apply for a loan to acquire the lease of the shop you rent from Mr. Fairfax. Despite the seriousness of your case, I regret to inform you that your request has been denied. Hmm. The amount uh. of your personal contribution, 11 pounds, is not high enough and represents too small a part of the final transaction. I remain at your disposal for any questions. Adam Flint. Mrs. Asher's meager savings were not enough for her to own the tobacco shop, but will largely cover her funeral costs. Well, that's a bummer. This, whew, okay. Uh, who is this? You know, why can we not look at the strange man on the wall? I know. What a strange box. It looks like you have to slide the slats of wood to open it. A slidey puzzle? Um. No. On the top of it, maybe? Mm. Ooh. How do I... It just wants uh, to let me grab... I need it to let me grab one. I thought it would... Do uh, I have to... It is blocked. Okay, so... If we click on the bottom, like, this. And now we'll... Aha! This button appears to activate a mechanism. Okay. <clears throat> oh, so now it's on that side. Again? Right there. I mean, yeah, it's. Is this the only one we can move? Okay. That should do it. Or are they just starting us out really easy? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I feel like Who it's is this young woman? just to get the like click and draw drag like mechanics of mm. looking at stuff like that felt very tutorial esque. Yeah. To my dear aunt Alice, married Drawer. Okay. Mm. Hello. Have you found We're not anything? done. The victim has a niece. We must find her. Can we keep uh, looking? Okay. Okay, good. My guy's just like, took it, didn't say anything, <laughs> left. Can we look at this anymore, though? There was know, other stuff there in there. Thing? There was like a necklace in there. Maybe... I've finished with this subject. Well, okay. Maybe that was just like 
keepsakes or something? This like interior that? is very simple. Observing particular places more closely may provide you with further information to the investigation. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of hard. No jewelry for you. Simple tap. Modest crockery. Okay, so basically she was poor. This is Asha. We get very it. Simply. <laughs> yeah, we we knew this, <laughs> but I guess we have confirmation. Okay. Um. So this. Oh. Oh, he's just looking at himself. <laughs> All right, Poirot. Okay, so we didn't walk towards. Can we go over here? Ba, 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 ba. Um. I feel like. <sighs> We looked at her nightstand and there's nothing in her drawers, right? We can't. No. Looked at the blood stains. Okay, I just feel like we should find more in here, but it, maybe not. Oh. Yeah, I understand the walking mechanics the place better is now. Unusually <laughs> Magazines and our papers are in order. Okay, so and there wasn't like a scuffle. Well ordered shelves. Ooh. Okay. Noted. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. So, Poirot, any news? So, an ABC guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exact. Mon ami, could you have a word with the neighbors? Some may have seen something. Of course, my friend, I'll do it straight away. His lips are wild. <laughs> Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Ooh, okay. Here you are making Poirot's little gray cells work. The aim is to answer the questions he asks himself by establishing the links between the clues in order to deduce an answer. Hover the cursor over clues to see their descriptions. Click on clues with the left mouse button to select or deselect them to answer the question. Okay. Is theft the motive for the crime? No. No. No objects of value for sale value. in the shop. That's gotta be one. It's full yeah. of money. Okay. Is that all we need? Okay, yeah. Okay, I get the it. The motive is definitely not financial gain. There is no sign of a struggle, and the till has not been forced or emptied. Struggle? I think I've oh, looked no, everywhere here. Okay. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. I also can't get over that in the in the Poirot movies. It's um, freaking Kenneth Branagh who played Professor Lockhart in the Harry Potter movies. Oh, is it? He's playing. <laughs> Honestly, he'd be perfect. <laughs> he he he's the guy who played Poirot in Murder on the Orient Express. He's so good as him. I. Didn't notice that. I mean, he looks very different, but. <laughs> okay. Huh. I mean, did we miss anything? Is there anything else? Oh, so we can do all of those. Okay, yeah, let's do these two. Was she killed on sight? I mean. No yeah. other marks on the floor. I, sh I feel like she had to have been. I think she was. Uh, this is a little bit like contradiction, and I like it. Um, 
I don't know which one of these right. was found at 11 p.m. I mean, she was last seen at 5.30. This doesn't mean she died here. I mean, she was in the shop at 5.30. No other marks on the floor. Why would we assume there'd be other marks? Uh, signs of a struggle, I guess? This part was a little confusing, but it gets easier in my opinion. Okay, good. It's, I mean, I understand the concept, but it just seems like none of these l can lead us to this cool. conclusion. I mean, the body was found there is, I guess, something you yeah. could conclude that, like, it, the body is there. She's probably... Okay, let's try it. Oh, apparently not. Huh. Pull the blood near her head. But it's not like at her head. Well, if there's no signs of a struggle, you can assume that she knew the person. Or it could be that she wasn't killed there. there. Oh, okay. I guess I see where that was trying to... Mrs. Look. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape of the blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. Okay. How to explain the presence. Okay. No fingerprints on the guide. Letter signed ABC announcing the end over murder. I mean, that yeah. would be an explanation. And and that for sure. Yeah. Ah. The murderer deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints. And the fact that it is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. So that gives serial killer vibes if they're trying to add a signature. Right, because... Which means it's probably not like a crime of passion like her husband. Right. I think that is a safe assumption. Also, that would be a boring game. Accurate. <laughs> Alice Asher's niece. Uh, okay, so maybe we can find her and talk to her. And that's it for now. And then we've done all of these. Inspect its surroundings. Okay. This trophy is part of your collection. Neuron. All right. Mm -hmm. Four pens of letters, a lovely Gosh. lot of letters, four pens only. <laughs> Hello. Ooh, let's observe her. Gonna look at you, lady. This woman appears to be a smoker. Mm-hmm. I, I bet. Would... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it was not very relevant. <laughs> <laughs> she has a cigarette. She mm -hmm. has an ashtray. She has matches. Nailed it. I was gonna say I would hate She's a big any smoker. job. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. That I would have to yell at people on the street. Oh yeah, no. Mm -mm. Same. A bottle of mainly because quality I hate vinegar. being yelled at. The oh, smell could oh, awaken the yeah, dead. Yeah, it's the worst. Okay, we have vinegar. Can we talk to her now that we've observed her? Um, Your strawberries appear to be rather soft. Soft? The cheek of it! What are you trying to say? Did you know Alice Asher well? <laughs> and for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, an ego point for the that. detective. Nice. You're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. 
And you heard about <laughs> okay, Alice's lady. murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. Um. Uh, Poirot. At this point, I don't think. I don't think he would accuse her of making fun of him. No, and I don't think she would respond very well to that. Mm -mm. I don't think she's gonna respond well to either. No, I don't. I don't think she's gonna be very helpful. But please we'll see. try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache. Yes, of <laughs> course. Come I take on, such pride. Now. You're scaring away my customers. Oh, did you see please, the word contemptuous? Do not be ridiculous. Which word came up? Contemptuous, like behind her. Ooh, I didn't see that. Okay. Oh, I choose to go. Accents for Speaking of accents, <laughs> madam. <laughs> um. We don't. Do we know she went into the tobacco shop? We don't. Ha there was no evidence of like a smoker being in there or something. I guess the strawberries, but she probably came out to buy the strawberries, not the other way around. So the victim came to her. Yeah, I guess so. I know that Alice Asher bought strawberries from you yesterday. Well, you know more than I do then. Run along now. I have work to do. Oh, oh, we are. Rustic. Did we fail at that? I don't know. You won the trophy, Rustic Confession. I don't know. Can we talk to her again? Oh, you again? I've nothing to say. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We have vinegar. All right. Strawberries! Oh, Expense gosh. a pound! Hey, Warren. Is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. Is that not no, Moss? Please leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get very... her to the letter. It's very similar. I found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, Lemmy. I'll question her. <laughs> I have to look at it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think it is, but it is very close. <laughs> Especially on certain words. I, like, really hear it. Uh... Dash! A puddle! How clumsy! How clumsy. Missing cat! This place is run oh, down. No. Mm. Hey, his real name? Uh, Richard Ayoade. The guy who voices Moss. Okay, no. I don't think so. <laughs> Cr crumbling shop fronts. Okay. This is a really cutthroat neighborhood. Anyone could have committed the crime. Okay. Dash! A puddle! Well, How clumsy. you don't have to step in there, or you could just step okay. over it. Kendall, you don't have to come at me like Four that. Four pence of lettuce, a lovely large lettuce. Four pence only. Okay, can we talk to you guys now? I oh, know that's gonna take me into the shop. I don't want that. I found the victim's niece. Four She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. <laughs> Thank you, Molami. I'll question her. At the back of the shop. Okay, did we successfully? do the surroundings yes okay will that be through the shop or like around the shop he already strawberries there. six pence a pound oh my gosh lady okay no, not this way can we talk to this man over here just the oh 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 you, sir. No? Nothing? Okay. No. I guess let's try going through the shop. Right? They did say behind, right? Uh, the back of the shop. Okay, yeah, maybe her apartment or something. Yeah. 
Oh, they took her. Okay. Oh, she's crying. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Jap had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. Uh, His attention yeah, is sense. commendable. You okay? No. She's sad. Is her grief sincere? Ooh, okay. Ah. She's not crying. Or I don't see tears. Oh, well. Lowered. Uh, she's wearing black. I mean, none of this... She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks fragile. Okay. All right. Oh, oh. oh my god, no! No, Poirot, <laughs> Poirot is very, like, he can be very, like, warm, and that is not... You are very fond of your aunt, am I right? She was the only family I had since my mother died. We don't know that the inheritance is for her. Do we know if she had children? I we know that she does not. So... But do we know that? Deduce. We don't, but I guess maybe this means, like... Well, she had no children, so... Who will she leave her inheritance to? Oh. It I just don't seems like not the time. I don't know. Either. Do we know this for sure? We feel like... The, did the other police guy said that she didn't. But... Mm. <laughs> I'm worried... See, I, this is where I'm worried about ego points, but I don't know what ego points do. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do, though? <laughs> so do we want them? Yeah. Because I feel like Poirot would do this. Okay, then do that. Ooh. If you are her only relative, you would be the only one who inherits. Sir, my aunt was poor. And in any case, I'm not interested in any legacy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Stronger crying fit. Uh oh yeah, her eyes are really crazy a little bit. My apologies. I see that you mean what you say. <laughs> okay, all right. We've backed her off to just sad. <laughs> Ask if Alice was afraid of her husband. Ask if she ever thought the husband would go through with his threats. They're basically the same question. Yeah, they f what's the difference there? Hmm... That we know that he made threats? As yeah, probably. Asking. If she ever thought the husband would go through with his threats, she may not even know he made threats. Um... Was your aunt afraid of her husband? He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. Uh-huh. Mm. I feel like we should ask if she was all right. Yeah, I like that. Did you haunt enjoy good airs? She had a bad throat, but she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. What does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. She was a sugar mama. <laughs> Ask if Franz forced her to give him money. Ask if her aunt had a reason to help her husband. That feels like... Why did she support such a good for nothing? He was her husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. She could. I understand. She could, though. I mean, I... You have been of great assistance, Mademoiselle. 
<laughs> yeah. We're both like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Please take this, young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jeff said. And since Alice Asher gave him money regularly, it was not in his interest to kill her. Right. That's a good point, because the money sounds like it's going to her and not him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. So he would have rather gotten it in, like, installments. Okay, yeah, we have to find him. She was working. Oh, she was smoke. Yeah, she was working. She, she was, was stocking the shelves. Right, yeah. She would have been stocking shelves. 11 p.m. Packets in a muddle on the shelf. This makes sense, too, because yeah. Yeah. if she, they came up behind her when she was facing the shelves. Right, I agree. Yeah. Nice. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Oh. That's like a nightmare. Yeah. I don't like it. Time range. I mean, we know when she was seen alive and we know when she was found. <laughs> I felt like there was going to be a trick to that, but no, there was not a trick to that. Can we reduce this time range? Oh, okay. okay. Um, ooh. Okay, so we missed a clue. I wonder if it was from the, the grocer lady. If we, mm. like, had successfully talked to her, she would have told us, like, what time she got the strawberries. Maybe mm. it was after... 5 p.m. or whatever. Uh, body's not visible. So, what's the letter? Is that the letter hiring us? Um, it's yeah, the letter we received saying that there would be a murder in Andover on the 21st. Oh. So I don't know that that can no. did that hold on do we have that can we read that letter I don't think we have it but no Nancy is a suspect she smokes and must have been a customer of the tobacco shop but it's unhelpful. That is pretty suspicious. Yeah. So she either came into the shop to buy cigarettes after 5.30 p.m. or whatever, or she came out to buy strawberries. But I bet you that's what how we narrow that yeah. time down, which I don't think we can do. Can we try to talk to her again? Maybe. Let's see if she'll talk to us. Oh, hello, Franz. We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobbing him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. Maybe it's not Franz. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, I it's someone trying to do a voice of that actor. Like, doing an impression. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what should I do for this character? I'm going to do an impression of the guy from <laughs> IT. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Can we leave to talk to her? If he's just sleeping. Okay, ma'am. Hello. We're sorry we upset you. No. 
Uh. Oh, you again? I've nothing to say. But, but we want to try again. <laughs> <laughs> but we messed it up. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. Hmm. I wonder if we just can't do that one. Really upset by that. <laughs> I don't like it either. I I hate it. We'll try to connect it with some other things, but I just don't feel like. What if we like still use the clue? Can we? Mm mm. No. Okay. Yeah. What if... No, I, it's gotta be that. Yeah. But we can't... But... <laughs> but... <laughs> I hate it! <laughs> I'm gonna be so upset if we can't accomplish, like, all of our... all of the things. Is not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Oh, okay. the vinegar. Uh -huh. It could wake the dead. The dead. The dead. Can. Hello? A bottle of poor quality vinegar. Oh. The smell could awaken you think the dead. We'd be able to ask her. Maybe Could we no bring her some, like, smokes oh, or something? You again? I've nothing to say. Ma'am. A bottle of poor quality vit. We need your vinegar, though. Oh. Can we give gifts? I have no idea. Because <laughs> she's probably going to let us take it. But... Uh... Strawberries! Get your delicious... Shut up. <laughs> Dash! A puddle! Yes, I tried to walk around it, but you won't walk around it, so... Four pence of lettuce! <laughs> a lovely large lettuce! Four pence only! Okay. It has to be the vinegar. Strawberries! But is there any strawberries? Inside? Get your delicious <laughs> strawberries here! <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, there's they literally have the street <laughs> blocked off, ma'am. <laughs> you nobody's coming. <laughs> it's a good it's not in uh, Okay, but can, can we take the bag of strawberries? Or... And be like, listen, lady. Maybe. No. Red liquid is oozing out. Okay, all right. Never mind. <sighs> I was wondering if we could take some... There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. Can we st take one? Give her one. There are cig... Oh, my God. I've finished with this subject. Okay, well, there has to be a way to get the vinegar from her to progress. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. Right. Oh, okay. Was there something in the back we could use? Mm. Could give her the necklace. <laughs> I've finished with this subject. He won't even let me look at it. Can we make him a tea? Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. 
It just takes me out of that, so... Okay. Right, we just check ourselves out. All right, all right. So, okay, what 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 do we do? Um. Uh. <sighs> Did Alice Asher suffer? I was thinking maybe we could grab that cloth and pour vinegar on it. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you should just get the lady screaming outside to come scream in here. Right? How will I come up? What? What are we looking at? Oh, it's at? the stuff he knocked over. Oh. A box of new stockings. It's Alice Asher's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative Aha. thanks to this piece of information. Yeah. Mary Drower <laughs> was telling the truth. <laughs> Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Ma'am, we're gonna. Ma'am. You're gonna. We talk know to some us things now. about you. Mm. Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy <Your> shit! Is <laughs> not what? Doing that. A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie! She only one pound! That's I a swear. lie! Um... I think we can accuse her of lying because we have in the book that it was more but she's gonna I don't know she's already really like cantankerous <laughs> she's upset with us I don't know uh, like I'm wondering our, like, if she needs a hard hand and like if we accuse her of lying and catch her in a lie she'll like back down I yeah our like decisions seem to make such an impact mm -hmm. okay <laughs> i mean i'm with you if you want to tough love it Let's we can do it we'll do it. enough lies it's not lies but you're not Shit. quite as clever as what you think <laughs> now please be so kind as to explain this look at my account book alice owed me 11 pounds for fruit and vegetables I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. Mm she owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Oh my god. Prison? All right, Poirot. Now that's not fair. <laughs> I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen, maybe I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. Uh-huh, what time? At what time? Yes, yes, yes. Six o'clock. <laughs> she left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. Okay. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. But you couldn't see the body behind the, the counter. The body that was laying on the floor. She probably just walked up and was like, oh, she's not in here, and just, like, set them on the counter and left. Um... Yeah. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. Mm. 
There was a railway guide. So on literally the between five thirty and six. Alice didn't sell them. Me? Maybe it's the customer who you left You didn't it there. see a dead body on the floor. You were not allowed. I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something but... for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Hmm. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What is your problem I mean with is people German. not from your country? That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. Uh -huh. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed. And I have better things to do than watch her shop. That's fair. You're just out here yelling at people, though. <laughs> Uh, yoink. Ooh, we can take it. I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. All right. Let okay. us now try and get our brain cells to work. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we have connections we can make. Um, so... So it would be these two. Yeah. Nice. That's quite a small window. Yeah, no kidding. Um, can we do any others? No. All right. Mr. Drunk Man. Everybody's in here. Hello. He's not in any condition to be questioned. Oh. I have to find a way to sober him up. Hold on. I've got a way. We have a way. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. It is rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Oh, Hastings. <laughs> yeah. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. Okay. Look. This man is in rather a bad state. Ooh, yeah. he's got a black guy. Uh-huh. He's got a bloody lip. Uh... And bruised knuckles. Oh, and the tear. Oh, and bruised knuckles, yeah. This man has been fighting and he smells um... of alcohol. Okay. Hello. Uh, accuse him of having threatened his wife, ask if he's genius. I kind of want to offer him a cigarette. Yeah, let's butter him up. Care for Where a cigarette, your pal? Monsieur? Tell us everything. What's that? Oh. Scented cigarettes? He hates it. Never mind. No We're thanks. terrible. <laughs> Bien. I was trying to be friendly, but you are quite right. Shit. Let us get down to business. You threatened okay. to well, kill your wife, dick. and now she's dead. So what? You shouldn't take things so <laughs> seriously, sir. <laughs> Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, if things were going so well with your wife, why did you not live with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. Because you're a dick. Mm. Uh... He's already contemptuous. Are the six that she was grabbing non-scented? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that could be a clue against him if it is. Um, hmm. We don't really have any indication that she no. was sleeping around with somebody else. I just hate the word accuse. Yeah. But. J'accuse. Um, hmm. Avery says a kiss. Uh, <laughs> you can't have treated her very well for her to run away. 
No, oh. sir, no. Pretty good. I wouldn't say I'd ever laid a finger on her, but it was only normal. Oh, yeah, only normal. Was my wife. Uh I don't know what you mean. He is a hypocrite. <laughs> like most men. Make fun of him being beaten up. N no. Make fun! No, no, he's just, he's clearly been fighting. <laughs> hypocrite! Asha, look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. This is you Jess right. Mariano getting beaked by a swan and being yourself. like, <laughs> so someone I wasn't gave right. you a good beating. <laughs> a beating? No way. All Ugh. right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. You see the state of him. You should Very see the other guy. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Mm -hmm. Yesterday afternoon, yeah. I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. A dog oh, fight? Oh, 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 yes, was such a terrible oh, dog fight. Fight. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. I hate it. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about uh, six, I think. <laughs> we were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. I couldn't have killed my wife. I was I was betting on fighting dogs. <laughs> Oh, God. Asha's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check Great. that he did have a fight with this That's Tanner on the horrible. afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asha was a ruffian who used to beat his a wife. ruffian? But he is not very educated. I love that word. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume mm. these things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. Okay. Doing things. Reconstruct the crime's course of events by selecting the actions that the killer may have executed. Okay. The killer enters the shop. Oh, this is so intense. Um, I mean... Ooh, advance. E well, we think that he buys something right right they said that it was when she turned around to get the cigarettes that he asked for yeah so i think advance yeah i loved this part yeah this seems cool mrs hasher turns around to greet a customer and never mind that hammer yeah just don't, don't get it the murderer asks her for some tobacco. Oh, it's a cane. She turns her back to uh, him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Um, put, put it on there. Yeah. Why would we... He then places the ABC on the counter before leaving. The ABC was not found like that. We are not far from the solution. Oh, is it turn the book around? We thought about oh my it God. A little okay, we have to oh. be really careful. What? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> the killer enters the shop. All right, all right, all right. It doesn't punish you too badly. Mrs. Hasher turns around to greet a customer. I mean, it's fair to assume that. We didn't think it meant the asks book. Her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Yes. Okay. We turn the book around. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. We did it. Maybe it only gives you like two chances or something like that. Because it'd be silly if it just let you keep doing it over and over again. Asha has a strong alibi yeah. and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. 
She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. Maybe that's why. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No, unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder what? blade. What? We Pardon. did not deduce any of that. Oh, Monami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion How? and of me a pronouncement a la Sherlock Holmes. Now for oh. the truth. <laughs> okay. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, okay. nor how to set hands upon him. <laughs> what shall we do then? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, those will Do not be again. so impatient, Estings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. Another murder, perhaps. It's a nice flat. Yes, it is. Read the letter. Okay. All right. Cabinet maker, notorious alcoholic, after jobs confirmation, his alibi appears to hold. I love the curved bookshelf back there. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. You know, we say that dogfighting is, like, not so much a thing anymore, but, like, Maggie, one of my friends from my work, literally found a dog today uh, out in the forest, and she brought it to the vet, and it was, like, covered in cuts, and the vet said that she thinks it was a bait dog for dog fights. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they definitely, it's still, like, prevalent. It's very, it still happens, unfortunately. But that's awful. Very upsetting. I'm like, there's not even that many people out here. Like, does that mean how many of y'all are involved in this? Because it's just awful. Ah, <laughs> some cool hair. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> it is not the right time. Okay. There's someone at the door, right? I thought they just left it. Maybe I guess. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll go to the door. <laughs> Sorry, I just I didn't. <laughs> oh, it is. It's oh, just... it was just a letter. Okay. Uh, okay. Dear Mister Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? Mm -hmm. But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexil on Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, A, B, C. Why are his eyes in bold? I don't know. I don't know if that's just like a graphic thing. The next or crime will be like... in Bexil. What else? What, what we must that warn mean? Jap to Scotland Yard. Compare Did the, the new letter, letter with indicate the first anything one? that okay, might help the police? Something. To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Okay, well, the next place is going to be a C place, right? What is this? Let us examine this more closely. Okay. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Okay, so they're using a typewriter that... Like the capital I is like kind of something. Oh. The A is like switched. Isn't yes, it? the A appears to be quite unusual. Let us examine the characters in this world. Let us examine oh. the characters in this world. How? What? Yes, 
The A appears to be quite unusual. Let us examine the characters in this world. What? what? Are we trying? I don't understand. I don't, yeah, are we just trying to say that? Yes, this eye is weird. Mm-hmm. And this one yes. too? Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the okay. same defects. Yeah. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm okay. my theory. Got it. Okay. To the A's. Yeah. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. So we're mimicking. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Um. Uh, the W's. Mm, yes. Let us examine oh. the characters in this no. world. No, no, Let no. us not. Mm, the W is not printed properly. Printed properly? Of course. Why are we the w doubting characters that these in the are do indeed the have the same person. defects? My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Yeah, I mean, kind of obvious, though. <laughs> <laughs> Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these case hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. It's special about the Andover murder. Um, yeah, someone is letting us know that they're going to happen before they do. The first victim was Asher. Paul. A Asher, no less. Mm. Perhaps. Yeah, that seems like one. And the letter seems like. But this is the letter announcing the Bexhills crime. Oh, that's true. So maybe the ABC book. Yeah. Yeah. What can we guess about the next victim? Um, that they're get gonna start with a B. Seems pretty straightforward. <laughs> so, Poirot, have you found something? And the next one will be a C. It gets a little I'm afraid harder. it is not enough to stop the murderer. <laughs> Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Okay, but what's in your apartment first? Yeah, I want to look at all your stuff. Daily Flicker. June the 22nd, 1935. Oh. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Endover, murder of a tobacconist. Okay. Tobacconist? Never, never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. Leave Whitehaven. Okay. No, but what's in the apartment first? <laughs> we can't leave. We haven't done the Jesse Cox once over. I know. I've finished with this subject. Yeah, Jesse would be like, let me let me dig through everything. <laughs> My gosh. Okay, I was like, can we not even walk over there? Ooh, okay. Yes, let me look at all your stuff. Can we not? No? Ooh. Oh, good. We took the book? I guess we just have this? Andover, Hampshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of people to be like, okay, everyone whose name starts with an A. Yeah. No That's doubt about it. Them. 
Hastings is going bored. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it may be time to go to Scotland Yard. Okay. Not yet. He kind of sounds like the police guy, too. I wonder if it's the same voice actor. When I looked up the cast, the only person that had a picture and was named is um, Poro. Oh. It's Who is everyone else was just through to voice Scotland actor. Yard. Um, it was... I think that's all we can do in here. Ooh, no, there's stuff by the door here. Julian Dutel. Nope. Everyone else in the cast is just voice. <laughs> voice. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. So I don't know very it's much about Agatha Christie. It may be time to go to Christie. Scotland Yard. So when she wrote, did she write in her modern day? I think so. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know her stuff's been around for a very long time. She yeah. lived from 1890 to 1976. So yeah. Pretty much. Mm hmm Yep. Um, okay. I don't think there's anything to do except for just get in the cab and go. To Scotland Yard, please. Okay, I must go because I have not gotten this far. <laughs> okay, bye, Avery. Uh, <laughs> no spoilies. No Goodbye. Spoilies. Uh, okay, I guess we'll just go in. Well, look at all your stuff. Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Yeah. He also jumps to conclusions. Yeah, he really did. He was like, he, he beats his wife. If his alibi doesn't line up, we're gonna assume he did it. Gonna arrest them. Great. <laughs> Chap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. Like all hunters, Hastings has always been fascinated by weapons. You could say he jumps the gun. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, we just good one. To, just have to talk to him. Can we? Just... Like all hunters, Hastings. All right. Is there anything over here? Ooh. Alice Asher was murdered in Endover, the ABC killer's first murder. Okay. Plot twist. It is the policeman. London. <laughs> I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Not as true, I suppose. Tire of London, you tire of life. Isn't that what it is? <laughs> Chaps in interview that? room. Many cases have been solved in this little office. Chap appears to be snowed under. He's got a lot of stuff. He's got his phone off the hook. Uh... Coffee. Tea. Right, we're in England. <laughs> Jack appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Mm, no, he's not going to be thrilled. No. 
Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. <laughs> Hastings lips. I have just received another letter from the BBC. <laughs> They're ridiculous. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilancy. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so. Mm -hmm. Um, he did on the first Good one. God, he, he definitely is very uh, busy at this time of year. And we have no idea who the next Come victim will be. We don't have no idea, but I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? Uh, I thought about it when I saw the name Asher. I guess they don't know the they're in a game of the called woman who was murdered in Andover last month. <laughs> when I received a letter mentioning Bexil, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Bien, we should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Okay, you're welcome. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An on ABC the beach. was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Mm, off we go. On the beach. Ooh, so even the location. Bexhill is a delightful beach. town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. <laughs> so the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot. <laughs> Do not be offended, Estes. Poirot's very fussy, I and I enjoy that about him. <laughs> and from his face, <laughs> I would say that things are not looking good. Fussy Frenchman. Is it police? Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Uh... It does away. seem very nice. Yeah. Little bungalows. Ooh. Victorian houses. Yep, 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 yep. And the water. Um, the beach. Just the beach in general. Hello. Ah, there we go. It's a cute little, like, seaside. Bexhill thing. is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. Okay. Uh, so if we wanted to leave, I suppose? That's another little cab. Uh... already looked at all that. Okay. Let's, um... Oh my god, the little foot sounds. <laughs> Touch them. There is no doubt about it. Bexhill has one of the most beautiful There's beaches in the area. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. Okay. <laughs> Thought he might comment on the crab. Hello. Oh, we're not even going to talk to the inspector. We're just going to go for the body. We should have the courtesy to go and okay. see Chief Inspector <laughs> Chap before examining the crime scene. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock. Okay. And we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. Yeah. It often it, decides it their can. destiny. 
The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman yeah, missing. Yeah, you don't want to give for them the moment. attention. No witnesses, right, I yeah, imagine. Just Indeed. Figure We've out asked as much as everybody can who may have met a young woman anything. fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, However, Hastings. if they did release that information, and I was a woman, like, with a B at the beginning of my name, I would leave. Right. On that day. That they were supposed to kill someone, so. This is true. A good point. Like, I'm out. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. Right. Or at the very least, like, make sure you're around people or... Yeah. Do something to... This oh key God, is too strangled. small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. Okay, we've got a key. We have These marks have been left by a rope or a braided cloth. A braided mm -hmm. seat belt. It may have belonged to the victim. Yeah, I mean, looks like there's a place for a belt there. This key is too small. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. Mm hmm. Could have predicted that. She doesn't have any shoes on. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. That is strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe oh, so that she could bath. In a, in a bungalow, perhaps. Okay. Uh... Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. I do feel like the belt has got to be the other thing. It didn't let you... Okay. Huh. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Hmm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to he work. He just didn't want to <laughs> be like, yo, she was hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how she killed. None of her belongings. She did not. There was a braided silk belt. Yeah. Marks on her neck. Uh, yeah, she did I not did struggle. That. Strangled by surprise with her own belt. Like, it's upsetting. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Now what do you want me to say? What are the common points between the Andover murder and the one in Bexhill? I mean, they both... Yeah, the ABC good. Um, yeah, ABC guys. The work of the same murderer. Yeah. The press does not know that the ABC guide was found in Andover. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be either one of these. I would think it's the letter. I would think so as well. But also, like, the fact that the press doesn't know, so they haven't released that information, so there couldn't be, like, a copycat murderer? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. Okay, so we need to find her stuff. Oh, identify her. 
So probably like a locker or something that she could put her stuff in. Yeah, I think these beach bungalows are meant for that. Mm. This hat is locked. Right. I mean, they're all going to be locked, right? But you wouldn't let me take... This hat is locked. Can we take her key? Um, yeah, we have it. Oh, we do have it. Yeah. Oh. I bet Let's... it has a number on it. Six? Looks like a six. It's a six. Okay. Yes. Hmm, the six is upside down. Oh my gosh, seven fifteen, seven sixteen, seven fifteen. I'd say five. 15 or 16. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Mm -hmm. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Ooh, let me see that. Okay. No description, though. Okay. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you, Elizabeth Barnard. Ginger Cat Restaurant. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you, Elizabeth Barnard. 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called? Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as Betty a ginger Barnard. cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. BB, yeah. <gasps> AA and BB. Do you ever have Yeah, us? so definitely yes, if you had her parents on the street leading to the beach. Number initials. two. Shall we go? Yeah. You are far too impressionist. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Name was Betty Barnard, and she lived in a bee town, and she was killed on the beach. Mm -hmm. She was a Back waitress so. at the Ginger Cat. And then Franz... Yeah, okay, so we don't have anybody else yet for this one. Go to the Ginger Cat. Okay. I mean, is it... Bye, Betty. Sorry. <laughs> so, 
like a back to the cab sort of deal? Maybe think... try to go to the left. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? Could it be? Um, yes. <laughs> Obviously it is. <laughs> it's the same name. Seaside and the kiosk. This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. <laughs> it literally says. This is definitely where the photo I found okay, in the hut was taken. We want to go over there, though. Can you let us go over there? Okay. With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. Hmm, okay, okay. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder. But a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. I thought Mrs. Asher was young. Yeah. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Okay. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the killer. Cert. But how many times will he kill before I do? Probably three times. I would guess three times. <laughs> I'm putting my money on three. I'll Maybe be with you in a minute, gentlemen. So cozy. This is lovely. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases. Oh, yes. Poro likes things thing very neat and tidy. A mirror. Ooh. <laughs> Look at ourselves. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Three ego points. Um. And she said she'll get the jukebox. Yeah. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Boo. What a pity. I like this music, though. Mm-hmm. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. Got a cross necklace. Mm-hmm. Mm, glasses? Her, tra her, like, suit? Red hair? Oh, ginger. Got it. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. Oh, what? Man after my own heart. New band time. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Ooh, These okay. are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Eleven AM Okay, yeah, eleven AM to seven thirty PM and she's got like a really skinny Long scrawl. Where is Betty? Right here. Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Uh, but, from 5 to 7.30. Yeah. Betty worked from 11 a.m. Interesting. We... Oh, okay. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? Mm. How are we 
supposed to know that? Oh, okay. Uh, 1 p.m. 7.25. 6 30. Probably that. This one. bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. That one. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? Mm-hmm. No, something's not he right. Just but got... he was alone at just one of these two times. So it's 7.20 and then there's a 6.30 over there. There's a 5 here as well. Most probably a family. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Mm-hmm. 720. It's gotta be. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be that one. No, something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Okay, so... You just have to pick... Select them. the two? Okay. Yeah. Most probably a single I man. I thought he wanted me to look lover. at all of them. Maybe. Oh, I see. This bill may have been written by Betty. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. probably another one. I got you. <laughs> Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Definitely. Maybe a murderer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This information he just came in and got a whiskey. Yes. I'd be shocked, yeah. I guess it could be what? the like dad of the family Gentlemen, who like what got are away. You doing? Oh nothing. <laughs> we are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality well, is the first rule of politeness. She has possibly I the best that excuse. Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful! Poor young thing. She doesn't seem. What happened? All that surprise. She appears to have been no. murdered. This is murdered. most distressing. How this will affect okay. my business, I shall not think. That's wow. not... Uh... Hmm. I would just ask about Betty. Yeah. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee. Her private life was none of my business. Your you problem, did know at lady. least that she had a young man. Indeed. Uh... Hmm. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him, all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Mm, I feel like this is what she wants to hear. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I find young people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, yep, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. <laughs> Gosh. This lady. Okay. Uh, hmm. She doesn't, she probably doesn't know why they argued. No, probably not. I hope for you that it was an isolated incident. It must be difficult to keep a respectable establishment if your staff shows themselves to be so shameless. The young man only made a scene the once. Jealousy, no doubt. Hmm, it must be okay. said the young girl was very pretty. Thank you for your time, Mademoiselle Merion. You have been of great help. Eased, even though you kind of suck. The yeah. customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, Mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. 
All right, off we go. Anything else in here we need to do? Oh no, the ginger cat doesn't know much about our private lives. Objects can be modified in our inventory. Okay. That's interesting. This is definitely where the photo I no. found in the hut was taken. I did not mean to do that. Beep, up, boop, up. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. I think we've gone past the Barnard's house. Lucky You're... for me, you have an exceptional sense of direction, Esti. We're in front of it. It's right here. <laughs> How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. Do you I hear all about I do not know if that me? is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. <laughs> you are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. Have they already told her, or are we going to have to do that? Because that's really not... I think they already My told her. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be able to oh, speak okay. to you later. There was a line Do earlier. Do not worry. We did not bother them. About the family. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. Mm -hmm. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair the very day it happened. The black stockings. She was crying. At and to think that the Betty other never shop? even wore them. Poor mummy. Oh my gosh. That the guy knocked over. Yeah. Oh Let's... shit. How do we get the game to we have to put that together? We're way ahead of you. We get it. <laughs> we'll we, remember. We don't Just know what like it means, but we know it's something. The Barnard appeared to something. make music a priority in their budget. Oh, hello, Devin. All right. They have a piano. Mm -hmm. They have a violin. Mm -hmm. They have a clock, a fireplace. Oh, there's a thing. How do I? Good player. Oh, worn furniture. Okay. Their home is modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. Okay. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt. Kind of. Okay. What is she feeling at the moment? Yeah, she's like covering herself. She's really staring at that picture. Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Hmm. Yeah, I think I would have an anger phase. Oh, for sure. As well. Hmm. My inclination with this is that we're asking, we're like insinuating that. Betty was like a party girl and like this is like somehow her fault oh, for going out. Asking for it. Ooh, I don't like that. 
but I don't know if that's what the game is gonna, you know what I mean? But right. I feel like her sister... Your sister had a fiancé, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Okay, she's tense. Ask if Buddy saw other men. Yeah, maybe ask Do you know where, where we might find him? He works at the estate agent's Court and Brunskill. Okay, great. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. Okay. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? Well, I did no. not say anything of the sort. <laughs> but young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. Sure. She may have well, had her sights the on other... the inheritance. Do you have any or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser? She was we have to study that all scenarios, like even assumption. the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the Chief Inspector finds him. Okay. Also, thank you. Yeah, also, yeah, also thank you. Can you... Can we look at any of this? No. The bear... Oh, we're just looking at ourselves. We're again. just looking in the I mirror. Okay. <laughs> Ego points. Okay. Um, can we look at any of these things on the table? No. I mean, I guess we just go up and look at her room. Oh, can we look in this cabinet? Family photos and fires. Family photo. Okay. No, please go. Oops. Okay, thank God. <laughs> oh, she was like a singer. It's very pink in here. It looks yes, like it Betty was also a music lover, the same as a family. Okay, yeah, she has a metronome and a microphone and some music. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Nah, she had a podcast. Yep, that's what it was. Are you just looking at yourself? Yes, okay. <laughs> a box of new stockings. Oh, another one. So she has hers. But there was one there. It there definitely like was. Betty has a very just busy life. Glossed over it, but I hope that comes back in. She does. But she liked luxury and going out. Mm -hmm. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Also means she probably got some unwanted attention. Yeah. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Something on this clock bothers me. Ooh -hoo -hoo. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. What a strange mechanism. A gear. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. It's 
it's, it looks like a slide puzzle. Yeah, why well, can you come back to it? This wooden Wait. panel is blocked. It needed. Oh, ooh. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. Okay, we probably need to set it to a time. This metal disc is stuck. Okay. This wooden panel is blocked. Okay. There was, um... Can you look at the bottom? Oh, no, I guess everything we need is... No, I can't look at the bottom. Okay. I was gonna say maybe we need to set it to a certain time, but... We don't have a time, to my knowledge. But there was that paper on the wall, and I'm wondering if we should have looked at that first. But yep. if I go to exit out, it asks if I want to quit the puzzle. So maybe we have everything we need. I don't know. Does moving the time around change the gears at all? Oh, I see. We can only change it from... 11, 10, to there, midnight. that's better. Oh, apparently. Okay. Okay. This metal disc is stuck. What did it... What did that do, though? There's gotta be something up here, right? No? Oh. Why can't we zoom in? Oh. I think we're gonna have to move them. The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. Right. Okay. Strange. A sheet of paper is... This wooden panel is blocked. What? Why is... I can't move this anymore. Twelve o'clock. And there's... Maybe now that he'd said something about the wooden cogs being blocked, you can move... The cogs are blocked by... Mm. You oh, just I click on see. It. What did that do? I don't know. Is it the cogs are blocked? It doesn't seem to be changing anything. Anything, yeah. <laughs> This wooden panel is blocked. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. I don't... This metal disc is stuck. It's 
got it's has to feel like it has to be this, but yeah, but how are we supposed to? I mean, they're not even moving. Yeah, I mean, it seems like this one should be able to move, and then this one should be able to move, and then you can back these two off and turn this. Mm. But that doesn't do anything. Oh, uh, when you hovered over the little brown piece in the middle, did it change color? Not that one. That, oh, that was the one I was thinking of. I guess it didn't. <laughs> nope. The cogs are blocked. I say exit, maybe, and see if there's something around that will help. Hmm. Every time we've gotten into a puzzle so far, it's been, it's like, self-contained. That's true. The cogs are bl This decoration oh. appears to be firmly fastened. Okay. This decoration appears to be f Do all of them appear This decoration way? appears This leg is not well attached. Take it. This leg is not well attached. I have to like... Aha! Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. This Thank is... Thank goodness. This wooden panel is... Wait, what happened? This wooden panel is blocked. I can't... What? The little thing thingy like with flew the... off. This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. Okay, so is it this one? Good. Ah, okay. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Great. This is like the Look, first a key. the room game where you're just breaking into yeah. that box. This could be useful. So, on that, yeah. I was thinking, yeah. This metal disc is stuck. No. Oh. Maybe it lets us turn these? Uh. No. The key does not fit this cog. The middle one? The cogs are blocked. The central cog is blocked. Right. Okay. What is this? Oh. One, two, th okay. Three, one, two, two. Yes. So, like, three? Is that what we're saying? That's what I'd guess, yeah. One, and then these two go in the center. Ah, okay. Ooh, okay. So now... I didn't mean to do that. I just want to grab it. Okay, the so the central cock is blocked. So can we? Uh, in the middle one. Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. Ah. 
A new lock has appeared. What does it open? What does it open? Okay, okay. This could be useful. Yes, I think so. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Okay. Yeah, her room is giving me Victoria's Secret, uh, like, a la 2005. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's the wallpaper. It's the wallpaper. <laughs> it's those pink stripes. Okay. Can we look at her nightstand? Donald Frazier. Uh, probably. Uh, there we go. This small key should be useful to me. Hmm. Hmm. It's like a pretzel. Yeah. Okay. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? Maybe. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the deep. I wonder if it is on the turntable downstairs. Yeah, it probably is. Come on, just leave. <laughs> the the walking is a little little silly. Okay. Okay. Mm oh, we have a key. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? Cupboard. <laughs> Oh, goodness. This looks like sulfash. Uh huh. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. Uh oh. Okay. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. I don't know how these old ones work. I cannot open it. Uh, this button? This. Do you take that off? Oh. That doesn't work. Yeah, do you like... I want to... I would assume you would take that... Right, you have to lift this up. I cannot open it. It looks like the mechanism is blocking it. The mechanism is blocking it. Okay. Mm. It needs a thing, a handle. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. These what? are. I it's mean, like... I know what they are. They're rests, mm -hmm. but like, what's the puzzle here? I think we're just supposed to make that equation line up. 
like make sense over here. There is bound to be a oh. clue somewhere. Because like we can probably yeah we can change these. So like these are rests. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Well then, it, I mean, it could be two of those. Oh, it could be that, and then this. There. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Okay. This one, maybe? I cannot open it. No, it not that one. Okay. Definitely not. Oh, no, definitely not. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is. Have we gotten... Is there something written on the record? 7-8-T. There we go. Just All have alphabet. to put the record on the gramophone and start it. Simply. You say simply, like this whole process has been That doesn't work. So simple. <laughs> yeah. We need okay. No. Okay, and then we put this on. And we lower it. What does this do? Starts it, yeah. I think we have to crank it. Just to like make it go. Where do we put the crank? I don't. On the side. Oh, there's a hole on the right side. Oh, so there is. It looks like something goes in here. <gasps> I know just the thing. <laughs> the picture. <laughs> The doctor said you should rest your voice. <laughs> You're such a kill. Be as sometimes. Scottish as possible. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her throat? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Too late for all what though? Okay. Uh, excuse me. I don't. How did that happen? We were all the way over here. No. Talk to her. It looks like this woman is single. She has feelings for someone. Mm. Oh. Oh, there's... What? There's no ring. Oh. Well, that's because her, her sister next... just died. Her sister... Okay. <laughs> she's looking so intense I in this know. <laughs> is it really a sister that she's studying in this moment? Uh, sure well sure whatever you say Pora. um okay what did she plan to do with her evening she planned to meet someone two yeah What did we miss? I mean, we still have to talk to her some more. They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? 
He's a bright man with a she was pretty ahead of him. and he, he had a great career <laughs> yeah. to husband. She was was substance, but and she was pretty she was oh, pretty true, gentlemen <laughs> i hear a note of envy in your voice at least there's you that you must have heard wrong mm. hmm hmm this yeah i like that do not appear to be very much in love with your sister yes he was mad about her mad you say being madly in love can often be destructive and mr fraser was known for being jealous i believe okay no more than average men are always slightly possessive especially when they are sure. with a pretty woman <laughs> uh accuse her of lying no no. I am not your enemy, Mademoiselle Bernard. And you are not my friend either, uh -oh. Mr. Poirot, sir. Sir. Okay. Yes. Jeez. Your lies are not helping Mr. Fraser, or you, for that matter. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the insight with this one. Ah, uh, I don't know. Why are all of these people so hostile towards us? I don't we're know. Just trying we're trying to find murderers. We're trying to solve your family members' murders, yeah. Um. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Protect him? Uh oh. I hope you're not suggesting <laughs> that it's you are so Fraser's hard, accomplice. Sometimes... There is nothing to suggest that, at least not yet. It would appear you have that to your be, sister's like, harsh murder with them. is a second in a series yeah. that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too. And as is often the case with reserved yeah, people, like when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. Oh. He could be so violent. Oh, God. I was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. Yeah, it was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. I mean, that's Donald true. But <laughs> started shaking and kept saying, "One uh, day, maybe don't uh, pick a one married One day, person. well, he'd commit murder. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> and uh, ooh. uh, hmm. I mean, this is the same question. Yeah. <clears throat> I say the second one. Yeah. She seems very concerned and like... This, this seems like we're assuming... He did it. He did it. And this one's like, do you think he could have done it? Like, yeah. Still benefit of the doubt sort of thing so you were afraid that he would become our main suspect i know that fraser was jealous but i wonder why you feel the need to protect him exactly oh, again had you not told me about the case i would never have dared to tell you about this little matter don loved betty with all his heart mm, okay i can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her very good mademoiselle barnard thank you for your help Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. And of course, you. Mr. Poirot. Ah, uh, and, and you. Don't too hard on Don. <laughs> He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. All right, all right. 
So, plan to meet someone. Used to grow out a great deal. She was seeing other men. Okay, she lied to Donald. That feels like something. Mm -hmm. And then that she was seeing other men. Yeah, and that one. Yeah. But she was at work, like. Yeah, for a certain amount of time, yeah. Does she know her assailant? Um, I mean, I feel like it's this. Yeah. Marks on the neck. A lot of visitors. Could be that too. Yeah. An unaccompanied guest. I feel like it's this. Of course not. Um, <laughs> what? I don't. Those two seem like the most relevant. Yeah. I mean, I know she was strangled from the back before. Okay. Let us now try and okay. get our brain cells to work. Okay, what is the sister hiding? Kept looking at the photo of Donald and Betty. She's now the sole heir. She's intelligent. She really liked Donald. But he was a good singer. Uh, I mean, it's gotta be the photo, and I would say the photo and Donald. Yeah. No. Oh, well, yeah, I guess. Maybe. She was pretty. Could have been. Seeing other men. I mean, if she liked Donald. I mean, it's an unrelated to Donald motive, but that is a motive. She's like, mm -hmm. if she doesn't even want him, then, like, why can't I have it? Yeah. Did Donald have a motive? Mm. We haven't even talked to him, so we gotta do that first. Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. Toodles, madam. I'm hoping after we talk to him, it'll give us a chance You've to like Fraser, recreate the crime. What is your feeling? Yeah, and we can. That'll be chap. a good stopping point. Fragile isn't yeah, exactly the word that springs to mind. I talked to his landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at eleven. Fraser wasn't home yet. Okay. Yeah. Megan Barnard said he is a reserved character, but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. Yes. Interesting. Okay, he's at the cafe. The cat cafe. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You Hercule Poirot? Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me. Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. This man looks suspicious. Uh, he's drinking, I guess? He's not looking at us. Oh, dark circles. Okay, he's drinking. Bald up. Oh, this is the whiskey. Uh, 
So he could have been watching her. Leave me alone. Interesting. Donald he wouldn't Fraser have come in and ordered in it terrible from state. her. That As would if be he weird. hadn't slept all night. Yeah. And Unless he was just trying horse. to like let her know, like I'm watching you. I'm Leave on to you. Yeah. Knowing she was about to get off work, you know. Perhaps. Tell me that it's a mistake. That Betty isn't dead. Sadly, your lady friend has been murdered, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. <laughs> Sorry, your lady friend has been murdered. Uh, he saw Betty say that Betty only ever did as she pleased. Ask what would have happened. Um, I like that one. Yeah, because he was just saying... If she had listened to you, she would still be alive. Should I take that to be a confession? Ooh. Oh, that but is that not sort of what thing, we have. Hercule! Of innocent men to prison. No! Under different circumstances, I might even find you amusing, sir. Sir, damn it. It's no time for amusement, Mr. Fraser. It is time to find your fiance's killer. Did you know what our plans were for the evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. And why did you believe that? Uh huh. I mean, why would he not believe that? Yeah, but if the sister was in London. Yet, Megan only returned to Bexhill this morning, Mr. Fraser. I didn't know. Right. May I ask you what you were doing yesterday evening? I spent the evening working. Your colleagues can confirm this? No. I often take work home with me. Mm. Hmm. Oh my god. These, I hate them both! I hate them both. Oh. I well, so we think that he's lying because he was drinking there? Yeah. I think it's this. I think we should do this one. Okay. Therefore, you have no alibi, Mr. Fraser. That's right. But that doesn't make me a murderer, Mr. Poirot. Okay, he's not contemptuous. I would like you to leave now, please. Good. No. Oh. Sorry. What? Uh. Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poirot. I thought the victim's young man was Shit. here. <laughs> yes, he's all yours, Chief Inspector. Let us now try and get our brain cells yeah, did, to work. Did we... I don't know if we totally screwed that... Oh, no, we oh, got we it all. Did. Okay. okay. Uh, did he have a motive? I mean, yeah, he did. He for sure had a motive. Uh, does not have an alibi. He's violent, I guess. Um... Carried out by the same murder. No. Marks on the neck. That could... He could be upset by that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he does no. not have an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> I have a move for all the murders. No. no. He doesn't. He doesn't. But there is the weird stockings connection. Yeah. Motive for he was very much in love with Betty. He was not. He didn't care about Alice. Right. Motive. I mean, I can't. Maybe this means it was like spur of the moment. Mm, there's, I mean, <laughs> I think it's just the letters. <laughs> I think you're overthinking it. Okay, maybe I am. I'm doing the Jesse. <laughs> yeah.
I guess what confuses me about that is like I thought we had confirmed that it was like the same killer, but maybe the killer yeah. is just like setting up these murders. You know? Because, like, if he had motive for killing Be Betty and most likely killed Betty, then, like, he didn't... Well, we made a connection where her sister had motive, too. That's... I think we're just trying to find... That's true. Okay, we have to return to the crime scene. To reenact it, I guess? Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. Mm -hmm. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree, without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the <laughs> crime. Okay. Okay. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. Okay. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around the waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Mm -hmm. Both of them walk slowly to at number five. Uh, no, they went into six. Yeah, it was definitely six. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. Yeah. Change. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. They were the maybe bell. this isn't I mean, where she was murdered. I feel like we're not no. far enough, and I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Mm, it's one of these. I say go forward one. Okay. They keep walking. Then she removes the uh, belt. Okay. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. I did not like his eyes. That was creepy. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Okay, we did a lot better that time. Yeah. Success. Ba ba ba. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. Yeah. Generous? <laughs> yeah, that's The murderer true. seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed. The young woman but was he's certainly not putting careless. Innocent people but not stupid enough to follow him. a stranger. Right, he wants the credit. What are you for planning it? to do, Poirot? Yeah. Return to London, mon cher Hastings. Okay. We've done everything seems that way. Alright, uh, I think once we get back to London, I'm going to call it a night there, and then we can do the next murder. Because we know there's going to be a third one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. Like, it has nothing to do with any of the suspects. It's probably just some Jack random... Jack has decided to like... reveal details to the press. Uh -oh. The alphabet murder is now famous. Well, that it was... is not a bad idea. The more people who know, people can the greater stay safe, our chances I guess. of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. That that's definitely a letter for the next murder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Poor Mr Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. Hmm. Uh. It is the 30th, yeah. It is. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Okay, we're gonna stop there. <clears throat> Do I need to save or I guess not. I think it saves. Hmm. We're only 40% of the way through, so maybe there's more that like, maybe the third murder happens, but then there's like quite a bit of stuff to put together. There's gotta be because I have no idea who could be doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a clue. And like I said, I don't think it's any one of the people we've met so far. No, I don't think I so think either. I think it's like a serial killer mm -hmm. that's picking these people for their names and their location. Yeah, and it seems like it's like the Batman syndrome where they're not so much interested in murdering people as they are with like messing with mm, Poirot. Like him. they, they want him to be... You know, fooled and tricked, and then get get one over on him in some way. Yeah, so, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, having fun toying with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's how these these great detectives they always have a a uh, what's his name in Sherlock um, Moriarty. Moriarty. Yeah, it's, it's one of those yeah. characters, I think. Okay, well, let's see. I'm going to see if anybody's streaming Nancy or something. Just to check. Oh, Tina's streaming. We can say hi to her. Tina. Uh, okay. Alrighty. Well, yeah, I, I, thanks for hanging out, everyone, and have a lovely rest of your evening. Um, obviously, back home now, so I will be streaming probably sometime this weekend. Um, but yeah, Lauren and I are back for Mystery Thursdays. And yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to, to play other games that we've been had on the list for forever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thanks for playing with me, Lauren. Yes, same. All right. Toodles, everyone. Have a good, lovely Bye. evening. Bye.